Since the launch of Iron Man back in 2008, it didn't take long before the MCU was the greatest cinematic universe in the history of film. And with Phase 4 now in full swing, there's no doubt that Marvel fans have a lot to look forward to on Disney Plus and in theaters. But what are the latest titles heading for release? And which Marvel headlines should fans know about? For all this and more, stay tuned. First of all, let's talk about the very thing that could bring the MCU to its knees. We are of course referring to the lack of respect Disney is giving to the original creators of the stories they they've made so popular over the last few years. For those of you who don't know, both Marvel and DC have come under fire over the last few weeks for their criminal underpayment of writers, illustrators, and creators, without which their comic books would have never become famous. The Hollywood Reporter actually published an op-ed in July of last year calling the payments made to artists nothing more than shut-up money, which prevented those artists from taking control of their hard-earned work. While we wouldn't go that far, considering how the creators in question simply did a job they were required required to do, there's no doubt that Disney can afford to give more credit where credit is due. And we're not just talking about a quick mention at the end of a Disney Plus show or a theatrical release. We're talking about monetary support for those original creators who got the ball rolling. We see this in the music industry where artists receive remuneration whenever their songs are used in other forms of media. And while comic book creators, illustrators, and writers aren't in the same position since they don't actually own the work being used, we'd love to see a similar remuneration scheme in play in the future. At the very least, original creators shouldn't be shut out of the titles they've worked so hard to build up. But is this really a problem for the Marvel Cinematic Universe? It's a bit hard to say whether anything could indeed take the monster that is Marvel down. But since cancel culture is such a thing at the moment, the studio will no doubt have to start looking after the creators of the source material it pulls from if it wants to survive into the future, especially with the story of Ed Brubaker going around. For those of you who haven't heard, Brubaker is the writer behind characters like the Winter Soldier and was unfortunately shut out from the film premiere of Captain America the Winter Soldier back in 2014. But it was when he expressed mixed feelings about the Disney Plus show The Falcon and the Winter Soldier that he really started to make a name for himself. The controversial release saw Anthony Mackie, the African-American actor best known for his portrayal of Sam Wilson, taking on the mantle of Captain America after the retirement of Steve Rogers. And it goes without saying, but fans had quite a bit to say about the inheritance of the title. This allowed the frustration of Brubaker to make it as front page news, with special reference being made to his April 2021 appearance on Kevin Smith's Fat Man Beyond podcast. It's here that Brubaker really made a stand, saying that it was ridiculous that both he and co-creator Steve Epting hadn't received any financial remuneration despite how often the Winter Soldier was being used as a character in the MCU. In the end, this has less to do with the MCU and more to do with quality content. You see, when creators, writers, and illustrators within the comic book industry feel like they're getting no credit for their incredible contributions, they'll no doubt leave the creation of these comics to lesser skilled individuals who don't mind working for less than what they deserve. And when this happens, the quality of the comic books we'll be receiving in the future will no doubt decrease. In fact, this has been happening for quite some time now, with both Marvel and DC struggling to maintain the golden age of comics that the MCU is currently dealing with. Funny enough, this same topic got a lot of attention in the 70s, when giants of the industry like Jack Kirby and Jerry Siegel had a couple of public spats with their respective publishers over a general lack of compensation for work done. From then, writers, artists, and creators of literary works came to know that the comic book industry was not the place to be for fair payment, and this resulted in a drought of new superheroes across the board. Just think back to the type of heroes that were introduced after, and you'll see what we mean, as the majority of them were derivative titles of existing heroes and gender-swapped characters, like Jane Foster's Lady Thor. Suffice to say, both Marvel and DC need to improve the compensation paid out to creators who are responsible for new and useful superheroes. And if they don't, both extended universes are in trouble. In brighter news, Richie Palmer has finally confirmed what fans of the MCU knew. With Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness set to be the biggest theatrical release of the year, there's no doubt that fans are excited about what's coming next. And with characters like Professor Xavier and America Chavez, looking to make their first appearances in the MCU, many have been asking whether this affects the power rankings of the characters we already have skulking around in the universe. When it comes to character power ratings, things are a bit subjective to say the least. Fans have been debating about who's stronger between Hulk and Thor for years now after all. But according to an interview with Richie Palmer in the spring 2022 issue of Disney's D23 magazine, it's Stephen Strange and Wanda Maximoff that should really have the title of strongest MCU heroes. In his own words, he referred to the heroes as 
two of the most, if not the most, powerful beings in the MCU right now. And since he knows a lot more about the latest Doctor Strange installment than all of us combined, we have a feeling that we should be listening to him. It was already revealed in WandaVision that the Scarlet Witch is on a path to become stronger than the Sorcerer Supreme, but in the current canon that would be Wong, not Strange. In other words, the fight between Strange and Wanda is the new measurement of strength in the MCU, and it sounds like we'll get the answer to our question pretty soon. In the same breath, Reynolds and Stewart appear to be playing werewolf. This wouldn't be the first time that actors have refused to divulge whether they'll be making an appearance in an upcoming Marvel movie, though. In fact, the term werewolf, derived from Andrew Garfield's denial that he would be appearing alongside Tom Holland in Spider-Man No Way Home, but fans of the MCU are quite sure that Patrick Stewart will be reprising his role as Professor Xavier come May of this year, as the tone of his voice in the latest Doctor Strange trailer is simply unmistakable, and we'd recognize the back of his bald head anywhere. Despite this, he has responded to the rumor by saying that he was simply watching the Super Bowl in his home on the day and couldn't have featured in the trailer for that same reason. In fact, he has no idea why people he didn't even know were calling him up and asking whether he would be appearing alongside the rest of the cast when the latest installment hits theaters. The introduction of Professor X would be a pretty big deal considering how mutants have been somewhat lacking from the MCU in the last couple of years because of what many believe to be a House of M-like event. Other rumors suggest that Ryan Reynolds will be making an appearance as Deadpool in the film, but he too has kept his lips tight about the future of his character. In other words, we'll just have to wait. Last but not least, Disney has finally cast Lyric Ross in Marvel's Ironheart, a piece of news that fans have come to respect after falling in love with her character in the This Is Us franchise. According to reports, Ross will be playing the best friend of Riri Williams, who will be portrayed by charismatic Dominique Thorne. For those of you who don't know, Ironheart will be following the adventures of Riri Williams as the titular hero who will no doubt take over the mantle of Iron Man with the departure of Robert Downey Jr. at the end of Phase 3. And since Ironheart is a relatively new comic, we don't know too much about where the show will be heading in the future. We also don't know whether Ross will be playing the role of Natalie Washington or another character to help Riri on her journey. But for now, at least we know that the This Is Us star is going to be making an impact. And there you have it, everything you need to know about the MCU at the moment. What do you think about the lack of compensation for comic creators, though? And what are your expectations for Multiverse of Madness? Be sure to let us know in the comments section down below.